Hi guys, Dorota Palicka International, new artist and educator here and I'm in with Emma. Actually, we didn't record this cool set, like completely abstract nails to match her dress. Uh, and it's the time to take them off and do some nice and bright summery set with some neon colors. So first of all, I have sanitized her uh, hands and then I'm going to use the safety bead to remove uh, the previous design. So we just have to remove it. Uh, the color of it, but also if there is any lifting, uh, we will file it away as well. And then do quick rebalance so we can create this beautiful new set. I'm using a safety bit, I love it, like um, working with it because it's quite nice and powerful one, but also quite safe as well around the nail folds and the cuticle area. Look how I'm also holding the nail like so there is not um, much of the fraction. Also, I'm protecting the nail folds. And I've got an absolutely amazing natural nails, but they are a little bit in a bell shape, some of them. So we tend to overfile the side walls uh, to get a nicer kind of tapered almond look. Get into that corner. Usually when I remove the product I try to thin out the free edge like this because if we are shortening and uh, reshaping the nails you don't want the bulk of the product which might be there. It will just speed up your work so first of all like remove the color from all over around the cuticle area. And then we want to thin out the free edge. So those few movements of the file will save so much of your work. They actually look really nice and intact. How many weeks is that? Four. Four, four weeks. Mm -hmm. So as, is, as expected. <laughs> Okay, I will repeat the same process on the other hand, but I want to save you um, a time as well watching like both hands. Uh, and let's move into the next step. So the next step is to remove any dust which might be on the nail plate. And then using a blue scrub, I want to dehydrate that. So before I do any more filing, I want to remove any oils which might be on uh, Emma's nail folds and any oils which might be on the nails. And you can see it, like there is a little bit of uh, dirt uh, and oils on the wipe. So this is always a fantastic tip, guys, because you don't massage those oils back into the nails when you're doing the filing. Then we're pushing back the cuticles and with Emma, because she's suffering quite often with the contact, contact dermatitis, mm -hmm. we have to watch it for a cuticle work. Uh, we do minimalistic work and then we will trim the cuticles after the filing is done because I don't want um, any kind of chemicals entering her skin because she's a sensitive uh, person. So we just remove the uh, cuticle from the nail plate. I'm not cleaning the nail fold at this stage. We will do that after um, we have um, finished all the filing. So one side and then the other side. Like make sure there is nothing on the nail plate because obviously we do not apply the product on the skin. Uh, we have to make sure just the nail plate is nice and clean. So there we are. That's it all nice and clean. Uh, if I would have like really large uh, cuticle, I would trim it because it will disturb me. But with this, uh, nothing is like uh, gonna disturb me, so we can easily uh, start the filing. Uh, with the almond shaped nails I like to lift them up so we are lifting them up by filing underneath. This way they wouldn't hook down like you will get a nice and straight uh, shape. 
and ideally I shouldn't file any more on the sides but obviously I might like them a bit more pointy so we have to file the side I'm blending everything around the old product so if there would be any lifting I would remove it but there isn't actually any lifting so there's going to be a super quick and easy uh, rebalance I just have to do like remove any um, old bits and pieces of the product and then with the corner of the file I'm scratching the natural nail and basically this nail is ready uh, let's do it same on the next one so file it nice and straight then lift it up and um, what else I love about filing from underneath we kind of tend to clean the nails from underneath and they look overall much nicer uh, and better so blend old product so at this stage I don't touch much of the natural nail. we don't want to over file it um, especially that's like this is quite intense filing I'm also not too bothered about the um, final shape yet at this stage so the main thing for me is to prep those natural nail plate and remove any loose product I'll be shape this nail And doesn't matter what shape you guys filing like always make sure the side walls are parallel pa parallel <laughs> oh gosh that sounds terrible <laughs> parallel to each other so, you know yeah so with this one I have to do a bit of shape correction What an amazing weather we had! Did you manage to enjoy it? Mm -hmm. Good. You've got a wee bit of a tan. You've got a tan. <laughs> it was amazing. Hmm. Another, Another week? week? Yeah, mm -hmm. I know. We need to do a nails to match it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's another nail. Maybe make it a bit more pointy. So this filing from underneath will also remove any lifting or a splitting of the natural nail from the product which can happen uh, when we've got the natural nails because they are natural nails it's just a gel um, rebalance we have been doing so many times that uh, eventually the extensions kind of grow out and you you left with the natural nail only. Okay I'm not going to show you the thumb because it's just exactly the same so yeah they are all ready for a uh, next step I'm going to do it the same on the other hand and then come back to you okay all ready for a next step so remove any dust and then dehydrate with the blue scrap in the meantime I also did the thumb <laughs> and then dehydrate the nail plate nice and properly make sure there is no dust particles or any other bits and pieces and then do the same on the other hand so I wanted to show you both of the hands at the same uh, time just so you know what is my salon routine as well when I'm doing a client's so clean it here properly and also you will know the timing as well because obviously we record in a life um, life kind of version a uh, new prep uh, so this is an extra nail dehydrator and a brush And then Universal Air Bond and Universal Air Bond acts as a base gel, bonding gel, with this difference that you don't have to cure it. And this is awesome because it's a huge time saving. Like, um, so first of all, it's dry on the air, and so I don't have to lose the time. And then it gives you a fantastic adhesion of the uh, products to the natural nails. And what is even more amazing about it, you can use it with the fiber gels, you can use with the fibers in a bottle, uh, you could use it with the acrylic system as well, because it's a universal air bond. The color I have choose because of the design is a perfect rose, and that's the kind of medium uh, color, and I think it will be just perfect one. So I've got my gel brush in here, and I'm picking up a tiny wee scoop of the product, Apply it nice and thinly, pressing quite hard. You want those product to get into the scratches which you have created. Okay, and because it's quite warm today, um, 
we are going to see how many nails we can do it like depend like obviously depending on the temperatures the product has a different consistency so i will just apply this thin layer through the entire set of the nails and because i didn't have much of the lifting in here i can straight away go into the apex placement and uh, picking up the scoop of the product on this one and then filling up my growth my apex so almost no pressure at the apex area and then press harder to remove any excess of the product same in this one i'm hardly missing any product you don't want to build up a kilimanjaro mountain on there because it will take you ages to file okay so we've got another one i'm checking how it's behaving i should manage one more and then i wouldn't risk it anymore obviously in the winter time we could do probably all five in the summer time I would say one, two, three is sensible, no more. Tiny bit more product in there and then cook them. So when my other hand is curing, I want this hand to be first of all ready for the filing. And in order to save time on this hand, I'm only doing one nail, guys. So always, doesn't matter like what is the weather, I'm only doing one nail in here because i want to finish my first hand sooner change so this way this hand will be ready for filing once i finish applying the product on the other hand this is such a huge time saver like it's unbelievable try to keep the contact with your product constantly don't lift your brush too much because then you're creating air bubbles change and now my right hand is curing 60 seconds and I've got 60 seconds to apply product on those three nails and then we can just straight away start filing. Um, using this technique for a rebalance like or even for a nail extensions like when you're building them on the tips is amazing time saver like absolutely amazing. Because literally you can say, see it, it takes just minutes to infill the entire set of the nails. And I love doing um, nails like when there is no lifting and no trouble with them. So obviously the better product application, the better nail prep you've got, then the easier your uh, rebalance is going to be when the clients come back to you after like four, five weeks time. I usually do not recommend it do it in just like my clients are banned coming back after two weeks. <laughs> I sometimes have to push on them a little bit longer um just so we can squeeze everyone and so those nails are ready but actually it's less than 60 seconds <laughs> so we have to um now come on come on come on cook it faster so we have to wait that's it change um and then this hand is ready for filing so close your products make sure that dust doesn't get in there and then using the uv cleanser remove the inhibition layer so nice and squeaky clean you could also see it what i did as i have turned the wipe so i don't want to like here i'm removing the inhibition layer and there is lots of inhibition layer on my wipe so i don't want to dab it in i usually bend it and then use a clean side to remove the inhibition from the other uh, needle just so i don't bring it in into the entire nail folds okay they are ready for a shaping and i will show you again on a one two nail uh, just so you can uh, see it how it works so side walls nice and straight nice and straight make them parallel 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 <laughs> well well okay parallel um leave those free edge up a little bit because that's nicely um removes any separation of the natural nail from the product blend everything around the cuticle area and guys this nail is perfect I, I don't need to touch it anymore like honestly i don't need to so same in here same in there around the cuticle area uh, the fastest i did a rebalance on the clients that's my record actually it was 36 minutes i don't know how i have done it it was with the color application i never counted the time we was just chatting like i do chat now uh, and it was 36 minutes but of course i book all my clients an hour and a half for like crazy designs i book even two hours um because you never know what the client comes back with so you want to be uh, really prepared for that there is again part of the nail which i didn't file because it's um, 
is good. I don't need to. We can blend it nicely with the buffer. So shape this one. Thank you. Bye. Shape this one. Remove the bulk of the product from the free edge. And sometimes I leave the needles like I will file it for for you so you can kind of see it at uh, time scale as well of the process. Again from underneath straighten those free edge so it's nice. I also like to check like how the entire product runs on the needles from underneath and then I can always uh, patch it up once I do the movement which we have to do it like so there are some steps which we never cannot skip and that's blending around the cuticle area if there is nothing to catch and you cannot see where the product is starting those needles are not going to lift so this is a good uh, tip for you okay we've got those fours done then the white buffer the white buffer is always extremely sharp so um, actually with any files what I do I remove the corners uh, with the file and this way I can protect the client nail folds and file like quite fast and strong without of worrying that I'm going to cut my client okay you can see it I have cut through the glove because I'm protecting a client nail folds so the white buffer is always very sharp and because I want to do most of my work with the white buffer you can see it they already look much nicer I'm not going around the cuticle area and around the edges for that we are using the sponge buffer because this part is uh, all um, spongy it doesn't cut through it but then you've got the sharp edges so again remove those sharp edges like really properly you don't want to uh, hurt your client and then I can blended everything on the sides around the cuticle area so nice blend in here and now you can see it i'm working much slower with my buffer okay because we are working on a very delicate part of the nail do it on this one I kind of brush away any dust particles and then once I have finished with the buffer almost I can see it okay let's do it and touch up here touch up there um, because it's faster to do with the nail file so I'm kind of like playing with this nail at this stage uh, and I'm searching for any kind of imperfections let's move on into the next one as I say, we do overfile the side walls a little bit. I did like them also not overfiled as well, but then Emma mentioned it to me she still prefers them <laughs> much more tapered, so uh, that's what we are gonna do for her. Okay, so we've got those nails buffed. Let's do cuticle work. I will show you on those two, and then I could finish all of it, and then we can move on into the design part. So now I'm just gently trimming any unwanted cuticle and then this nail will, after cleaning, will be ready for the design. Do the same in here. Okay, and we are going to repeat the process on all of them and then do the design. Okay, we already start doing some uh, nail art, so I'm gonna show you the color combinations. It is going to be 239, 240 and 238. Nice and bright colors, like I actually love the combination of those three colors together. So on this finger we are going to go those yellow. <coughs> Look how bright it is, absolutely amazing. Then on this finger we can go some ombre. Yellow, orange. And a pink one. OK, 
Okay, now I want to blend everything together. And you guys know I'm loving using the sponge for ombre. Uh, for ombre. <clears throat> So a form and then let's start doing the ombre cut a fresh piece of sponge remove the fluff and first of all, the sponge will really absorb all these colors, like hardly leaving any product on the nail. Like make sure you touch the nail folds with the clean part of the sponge, then you don't make them dirty. And then we can sprinkle it with some clear acrylic powder. Tap it to remove the excess. Touch up our French. Like I don't like when there is too much bulk of the product. And change. Now here we are going to do the ombre there. Thank you. <laughs> Self-service. <laughs> Emma was just about to press the button because I have put the blue tack to block the um, sensor. sensor. See, when you're painting like this and you find it a difficult like to reach some corners with the large brush because you're painting with three colors, just grab a small brush and then you can go around it, like with the small brush around the cuticle area. This is always very helpful. Uh, but do not do it with like uh, with the sponge. Don't go too too close in there. So now I need to take into consideration that the ombre is swapped. So the colors are like this. If I want to use the same sponge. Now the reason why I'm using the acrylic um, clear acrylic powder is I want the um, gel polish to stay on the needles rather than on the sponge. So the surface of the acrylic will help me to achieve better pigmentation because otherwise the sponge will just drink the entire gel polish. Change. Okay, on this needle we can go. On this needle we can go some sort of ombre French, why not? But just swap the colors. And again, because I have used the same sponge, I'm just going to use the same sponge again. The colors are that way. And then acrylic. So I've got quite a lot of on my lid and what I'm doing now I'm just putting it like this. Change. Then we can do nice yellow and here. Was it yellow on the other hand? No, let's do it pink. Nice and wobbly. And you can touch it up to make that smile line higher. And then ombre here. So the middle one, just place the middle one a bit lower and then the ones on the sides, you want them slightly larger, same kind of way like the French does. Swap my sponge. And sponge it. Sprinkle. Change. Okay, this one is cured. 
so I can remove the excess of the acrylic. Okay, and then we can touch up this yellow one. It's a really nice color, but I don't like the corners. And I think getting the corners so nice and neat with the um, brush from the bottle is quite difficult. Also, I'm not liking how is it pigmented. Because this is such a bright color, I wanted it to be stronger. So I'm just touching it up. Pop change. What we have to do in here? Clean the excess. And just do the small touch up on the pink one too. Perfect change. <laughs> then the white, so white French gel. I clean my brush because it's so full of the neon paint, so I have to dip it in, in white and then clean it in white color. Put a tiny bit of it in here and we can go and do some white outline in here. Nice and wobbly. <laughs> Yes, wobbly French. Kind of completely random change. And same on this one. Change. But so it still kind of reminds you of the French manicure. Awesome change. Okay, let's finish this ombre. So we can move into the next step. So with the small brush now, we are going to paint it nicely around the edges. On the other side, we've got orange here. And then we've got this yellow in there. Actually, yellow is quite nicely painted, so leave the yellow alone. Slap the colors in. So I want orange there. Go straight from the bottle, will be faster. Orange. Pink. And the yellow. Okay, sponge it in, and now you will see that the there will be more product left on our nail. See, the sponge doesn't drink it as much. Such a lovely coverage. Get into that corner. Thank you. And work out the other side. Swap the sponge. Change. <laughs> Looks cool already. Again, self-service. <laughs> you know what? Next time I go for coffee and you do your own meal. Yeah. yeah. With all these instructions. Mm -hmm. That will be fun. Client doing my Just nails. <laughs> myself that I would be really good at nails now. <laughs> oh, cool. I've never ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I see I'm sure the, you will. I see all the tutorials firsthand. Do you? Oh yeah, right. of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting here watching it. Yeah. You get all the instruction before they even uh -huh. ready for everyone else. <laughs> how cool is that? So you know how to do the ombre. It's yeah. easy. It's free lessons as well. Mm -hmm. This is called service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Swap it. I love how it turned it out on sponge. Mm -hmm. Obviously, guys, you have to try this acrylic uh, trick. It's, it just works magic change. And swap my, yeah, swap my sponge. No, don't swap my sponge. And just touch it up again. So basically now I have no product. Um, I don't need to apply the fresh product. I'm just dabbing it what I've got on the sponge to get even more pigmented uh, results. I do really love doing that as a third one just to perfect it. Change. And this way. And this way. Cool. Okay, so this part is ready. Now we still have to outline the other French, so I'm just waiting a couple seconds longer for it to cook. And then we can start painting some flowers. So for flowers I will use the watercolor brush, which is stored in the drawer, so I need to clean it from the previous paint, and that's what I'm always doing. Fantastic change! So white. Whoops, you can see how close the camera is, just right on front of my nose. Change. I will also show you how I clean up the corner of that one nail, where we got a bit too much product. change and then let's paint some flowers so the flowers are going to be pretty easy and simple as well uh, i'm just gonna use the watercolor brush some yellow and some pink kind of mixed together and then just slap some flowers in like we want to kind of keep them nice and exotic And then I mix it with the existing French, which I had in there, just to create a slightly lighter color. To paint another flower. I'm actually quite liking those pastel on the top of the neon. So what I did, I dip it in my brush in this uh, white color. And I'm just touching up the other flowers. Change.
So the petals looks a bit like a heart shape and some of them are different. Just a kind of random one. Perfect change. Okay, <laughs> and I'm just going to lighten up this one because I do really prefer the lighten up look. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a tiny bit of the top coat. So a drop of the top coat because I don't want that strong coverage and I don't want that thickness in there as well. That's better. It's matching the other one. Cool, change. Now the middle is going to be black, so we're just going to grab a tiny bit drop of the black and do the middles of the flowers. Change. And change and then all the magic which we need to do with white so the things looks nice so that's the one so I want to outline the flowers so they look like a flowers <laughs> Put it quite nice and wobbly as well. You don't want your petals to be too straight. Yellow. And white again. Tiny bit less white.
clean the brush again because it's playing with me a little bit <laughs> So if you're feeling like your brush doesn't behave, that's mean you've got too much product on it. And this one was just load with the product. Dotting too, because I don't want to... Oh, actually, no. Let's use some damaged one. So usually you don't want to use um, a thin brush for your dots, but I'm just going to do it a tiny wee dots. change I'll find this one that is cooked I put it on for the uh, just a quick freeze I change it to the five seconds so for a freezing of the product you don't need a long time like honestly five seconds is enough you don't want to also overcook your clients hands <coughs> Sorry guys, this camera is just right on front of my nose. So I keep banging it with the brush or my head. You know, I'm going to make Emma a bit more flexy. <laughs> See, she's 100% flexy. We can go any direction on this flower. I actually want to show you as well because I do it quite a lot. So if it's necessarily you can probably not see it now what I'm doing. I can twist the client hand any direction and just paint in any direction. Okay, perfect. I'm just going to add some sparkles through it and then this set will be finished. So for sparkles, I want to use the base gel, a drop of the base gel to go on my mixing palette. Clean the brush. And then indicate where you want to place your gems. I want something everywhere, but again, everywhere, very random. And we are going to use those tiny wee gems. 
Are you okay with the gems? Mm -hmm. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> If your gem doesn't want to stick, that means you have not enough base gel there. So just place it more. Gems can actually be really time consuming, guys. So a crystal on every single nail. Again, more base gel. Check if the pinky didn't move and cook. So this time I'm, I'm going to probably skip the thumb and do it separately. I like to shake my crystals and I don't like when the box is too full because if it's too full you kind of got them more difficult to pick. So ideally you want to shake them in so they turn into the right direction so they are much easier to pick. And then Olivia is speeding up with the filing. I can that's all what I can hear. <laughs> Okay, I'm missing something on the top in here. Perfect change. Caviar beads and then we can apply the top coat to make things even prettier. So we are going to go for a silver one. Ah, if I can open them. Oh no, it must have one caviar bead get stuck in there. Oh no, not a chance. Oh yes, oh, well done me.
<laughs> yeah, so guys, make sure the caviar bit doesn't get stuck in the lid because then you struggle like I do. For the caviar bits, we are going to use the small brush and then just pick them up. I want them kind of random because it's a very abstract random set again. And then around my middle. Completely random. change so we can freeze them again just a five seconds cure will do sorry my engine oh, that's it thank you Javier beets are even more time consuming, but they are amazing. Slap couple white dots. I didn't cure them, but I will cure on the other nail. So I'm very gently pressing it. Change. Because <clears throat> we still have to do some more. This is called exotic summer set. <laughs> That was just five seconds. Mm So no normally I'm very symmetrical when it comes to the placement of the caviar beads. 
but I quite like it this random way as well it's completely different and it just gives us extra interesting look to this set change that's okay okay a couple more on the farm And then squeeze the crystals in. <clears throat> I will show you also how I'm sorting out the middle finger. change okay we can top i'm going to show you how the things looks when we top coat it as well but i'm going to save you time on watching all the top coat process uh, but i will show you the middle finger how we get it sorted so clean the mess <coughs> that's such a summary set I like also how the texture of the nails so caviar beads always top coat them like I don't like them without of top coat uh, and I love how the texture change on the ombre nails uh, once we put the top coat they're becoming really nice and smooth so I'm going to do it on those two nails when the other hand is cooking Make sure you kind of remove the top coat from the places where the edges of the crystals are because otherwise you will have a bulkage change. And then we have to put the top coat over this one. And this one. So I'm shaking with my brush really strongly. Change. Here I've got a couple of the air bubbles, so what I did is I took a top coat, I placed it in, but I didn't paint it completely, and then with the tweezer, I'm just going to remove the dust particles which are in this holes. So the top coat can kind of run through it, and then the holes will disappear. That is called pitting when we overwork the gel a little bit. There we are, and that looks much nicer and neater. Very good tip, guys, for you. Change. Then the middle fingers need to get sorted so we can take a nice thumbnail picture. I'm using the spike bit now, like a very nice and sharp one. And then we have to file it away. Okay, so there's a little bit product which got into the nail fold. I don't want that there. Take a dust brush and remove it. So make sure you defile it from the nail fold, not from the actual nail, because then you will have to re-top coat it. So nice and slow motion to clean it. Change. Okay, we can finish top coating this set. 
and then I can take a nice and beautiful thumbnail picture for you. I hope guys you have really, obviously when we clean the things, um, well, the set looks always nice and pretty after the cuticle application and all those little extra bits and pieces uh, just to finish it off. See, we had white, now the white is gone. Uh, so I'm kind of playing with every single nail to make sure it looks all good and intact. Clean the top coat because we had some dirt particle and that's how the finished results uh, look. I hope you have guys really enjoyed this quick tutorial sending you huge glittery hacks and bye for now. Yeah, that's us back again because they look so much prettier once everything is nice and clean. Obviously, you can see it here, like the mess we had and everything. It's a nice, and we even give it a name to this set. Nice wobbly summer set. <laughs> yeah, we both send you now glittery hacks and bye for now.